<laughs> this was the first year I did not resolve to alter my life through diet and exercise. I looked at the world around me, the chubby parts of my body, and the future as far as I could see and firmly decided, if I look like this every day for the next 80 years, that'll be lovely. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen so many transformations, heard story after story of people whose bodies felt like a prison instead of a natural weight and glory. They took the pieces of society's expectations and their own peace of mind, intertwined them and wove a destiny for themselves of the fabric from jeans in a size that made them happy. I love that our first lady has made a goal out of lowering the occurrence of disease with simple and fun ways to keep kids moving. I have every intention of doing what I can to live kind and healthy with absolute nobility and no disease. But if I'm honest, I really think that meat is sexier than bone. I hate to see curvy girls repeating skinny mantras until their cravings have been shamed into submission and their extra parts have been whittled into smaller seams. Why are we more willing to starve than to allow ourselves to breathe beneath a belly full of chocolate, champagne, and heartstrings? What's wrong with woman-shaped hips, rounded for resting hands and babies on, spread for receiving love and giving life? These hips of mine love the beat so much that they often outrun my feet. They enjoy more than they force themselves to refrain from. We live just as well as the life we can sustain. They ask me to smile as hard as they have learned to grind. I wake up after nights on the town with tension in my muscles that I didn't have to wade through gym equipment to find. I have hard-working thighs, thickened by the biggest bone in my body, the strongest and most prominent muscle group. They are strength, covered by softness to the touch and to the clinch. There's more skin here than most women are comfortable with, and I was blessed with a comfort bearing behind. The easy to sit on laps, to rest on floors, and the better for squeezing because he likes that. <laughs> it hurts my heart to see these curvy girls attempt to radiate fat cells as if they were cancerous or cut their flesh away like malignant masses. They are often left as shells of women, all bones and bleeding souls, all strong muscles and pulses quicken for the wrong reasons. I wish it could feel effortless, like the changing of seasons, like floating on the surface of a lake with the sun beaming down on all our imperfect places, covered by only a few inches of yellow polka dots. Or we could finally accept what we've got and step into the water with nothing on at all. See, the sky has already memorized what we call our flaws. Maybe we could let more heads rest on our fleshy shoulders, our full chests, wrap the fat we have into hugs and acceptance. This guy I'm dating, he calls his son Fat Boy. He told me a, a story about an angry woman who called him obese. He said it didn't hurt his feelings, right, because he's too self-actualized to think that what she has to say matters, especially when it was spoken from a place of hurting. And as comfortable as I've learned to be, with 200 plus pounds on the scale and a culture that calls that ugly, even when I feel beautiful, I've noticed that the word fat still makes my insides cringe. No matter how many ways we repurpose it, fat chinistas are the best dressed women I've ever seen. And it's supposed to be a compliment when it's spelled wrong and translated pretty hot and tempting, but the word has been hurled an insult too many times to be redeemed. My mind once couldn't fathom a realm where bigger is better and fat equates to happy and carefree. My hair curls 1,000 different ways, sticks out in 200 different directions. The intricacy of that pattern is a reflection of the path my thoughts take through a brain some people say I use too much. Every day I look in the mirror and imagine a world where the space I consume is filled to bursting, not just with my body, but with my love. I refuse to eat only the tops of my muffins. The world is required to take all of me or none. <laughs> I work towards a life where the endorphins I release by ripping my muscles from their seams don't outrank the tingles I get from a kiss on the crease where my chins sometimes meet. I'm a curvy girl, and that is not a consolation prize. I don't and hope you won't let your eyes convince your mind that size two off the rack thin is the only shape beauty comes in.